So refractometers, uh, they are very neat. Um, these were basically developed to measure the sugar in fruit juice. It's kind of the same idea as the hydrometer. It measures sugar um, and it's not quite as accurate as a hydrometer, but you have to use a lot less sample size. So you use like three drops on this versus 250 milliliters in this. So first thing you need to do when you use your refractometer is to actually make sure that uh, it is calibrated. So to calibrate it, there's you take off this little rubber thing and you can, with a little screwdriver, turn this one screw and that will change how it reads basically and that you always calibrate it with distilled water. So what you want to do is put a few drops on the face and then you can look through it and you'll be able to see you're going to want it to hit the zero line. So as you can see, it's a little below zero. We're going to turn this knob until we see it hit zero. And you kind of have to turn it while you're looking at it. Okay, so now we're calibrated. So I'm going to dry off the refractometer. I'm going to put my little cap back on the screw. You can use this the same way you use a hydrometer, except you have to get your word correction factor first. So what you're going to need to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it, is to essentially fill out this word correction chart um, on Brewer's Friend. This is how I calibrated mine when I first got it. And you essentially take 30 different gravity readings um, with a hydrometer and with your refractometer. And then it will basically average them all and see where your refractometer lies um, so that it will spit out a number for you. And you can use it in the calculators online to make sure that you're getting as close to the accurate uh, specific gravities as you can. Like this thing was made for fruit juice, not work. So you kind of have to fiddle with it a bit to get it to work, but it's totally worth it. And another thing, these don't read final gravities as well as hydrometers do. So there's also a bit of a correction when it comes to measuring your beer after it's fermented. So there's another, there's a bunch of calculators online. I use, um, well, I do all my stuff in uh, Brewfather, so they have their own tool, but Brewer's Friend has it, um, and a bunch of other sites also have it. So, like, what you're going to see through it, it's going to say, like, specific gravity, like, 1.024 or something, or bricks 5, and you essentially plug in your original gravity, and then you plug in the final gravity it gave you, and um, you'll check, like, fermented wort, and then it'll tell you your ABV and your actual final gravity. I'm going to show you how to do just a standard reading of the unfermented wort, and then we'll do a reading of the fermented wort, and then we'll pretend that, like, that was a beer that came from this or something. So, just so you can see how the calculators work. So, you just put few drops on, close the little plastic uh, top. You gotta let it wait for about 30 seconds. Um, and then it works best if you kind of point it at a light. Um, so I'm gonna point at the light that's right over my head um, to see it. And I will also show you what it looks like inside. So I've got a strong beer here. Uh, you always wanna read bricks when you're using a refractometer because the SG and bricks aren't linear, so the SG on here is probably wrong. It's close, but it's not perfect. So we're going to take all of our readings in bricks, and then we're going to convert them to specific gravity. So my bricks is 17 point, I'm going to call it 3. All right, now I'm going to, I'm actually going to throw some water on there. 
wipe it off. Just make sure it doesn't have any liquid on it before you do your next reading. And I'm going to take some of my fermented wort, drop it on. It's usually fuzzy when you drop your fermented wort on, so you kind of just have to roll with the punches. So I'm letting it sit. This one actually isn't that fuzzy, but it's definitely fuzzier than the normal wort. So it looks like about, I'm going to call it six and a half. Um, it's not perfect but it'll get us there. I'm gonna actually just call it six because now that I took a photo, it looks much different. Okay, so then we drop it into our calculator. I know that my work correction factor is 0.992, so I'm gonna use that now, but I'm gonna show you how to get that number in a second. Original gravity, 17.3, my work correction factor, 0.992, and then we get my corrected original gravity is 1.072. So now with our alcohol present, we're going to put in the same 1.072. My final gravity was 6. My work correction factor is 0.992. And our updated alcohol by volume was 9.76. So my final gravity corrected was 0.997. But that's only because I actually, like, the way it calculates it, if you have a lower gravity beer, it'll end up dropping your final gravity pretty low. Um, and it, it all works out somehow, but because I listed my original gravity as 17.3, uh, that's like a pretty high alcohol beer. So when I'm like, this is not that high, so it just, it drops my species of gravity lower than it actually would have been. It's lower than this actually is now. So, um, it's, you have to use the, the same beer. It's going to be weird. Um, but yeah, so now I'll show you guys how to do the work correction factor spreadsheet. So, as I said before, to calibrate and figure out your work, work correction factor, use this spreadsheet um, that you can find on Brewer's Friends. And I'm just going to do it on this printed version, um, so my computer is not in my way. Um, but I strongly suggest you just do it straight on your computer so you don't have to type all this stuff in. Okay, so our hydrometer unit uh, is specific gravity. So you're going to put your bricks from your refractometer, but you're going to put your specific gravity from your hydrometer. The spreadsheet will automatically convert this specific gravity to bricks, and then it'll give you the factor. Um, so I have three different worts here. Um, it's best to use multiple ones just to double check that everything's good. We're going to um, measure the first wort, and I'm going to call it wort one, um, with the hydrometer. And then we're going to take like you can just take one hydrometer reading and then use it for basically the first 10 readings I'm going to do with work one, the second 10 I'm going to do with work two, and the third 10 I'm going to do with work three. So you could, you only need one hydrometer reading um, because that's what we're trying to replicate. All right, so this work is 1.03, I'm going to call it 4. So my first hydrometer reading was 1.034, and it was at 63.5 degrees, and the calibration is at 60, so it stays the same. So now we're going to, I'm just going to pull samples right from the hydrometer, or from the like sample I used for the hydrometer um, because I want it to be as accurate as possible and there's some sediment in this guy and I don't know if that's going to change it so okay so put your couple drops on let it sit for a minute I've got eight on the dot So 
this. Just got people in there. Going to go straight on to the next one. One point oh seven six. We'll call it one point oh seven seven. So our correction is going to be one point oh seven eight. So it went up a gravity point. My biggest fear is that I'm going to do this for you guys and not have done it well the first time. And my work correction factor is going to be totally off for the past like two years. Okay, work three. We're almost done. So temperature is 59 degrees. So I'm not even going to bother correcting my reading because it's so close in temperature. So my worst fears were realized. Uh, my average work correction is actually 0.969, not 0.992 like I've been using. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, don't be like me and uh, half-ass it the first time and then realize that two years later all of your stuff was wrong. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe if you did. Thanks.